Welcome back to 100 Days of Logic with Carnades.org. Today, we are going to be looking at Predicate Calculus. This is going to be an introduction to the final 10 days of the 100 Days of Logic. Now, Predicate Calculus is going to be a kind of logic that combines the categorical logic that we just learned about in the last 45 days with propositional logic that we learned about in the first 45 days. Because right now, while we can deal with propositional statements on their own or categorical statements on their own, we can't deal with them together when they are mixed together. Predicate calculus is going to give us the tools to do that. In these next 10 videos, we are going to be learning about what predicate calculus is and how to use it. None of these videos are going to be 90 second philosophy videos because there's a lot of information to get through. It's a little bit more complicated than the topics we've run through in the past, and I'm going to be condensing what would have been about another 45 videos of information down to 10. The first video we'll be looking at is symbols and terms. We're going to be going through some new symbols and terms that we're going to be using in the following videos so that you have a sense of what they are and you know the vocabulary before we get going. In the second video, we are going to be adding four new rules to our rules of inference from propositional logic that will help us bring in our categorical propositions. These are going to be universal instantiation, universal generalization, existential instantiation, and existential generalization. In the third video, we are going to be looking at another new rule we're going to add in. It's kind of a four-part rule that's called change of quantifier. In video number four, we are going to be looking at conditional and indirect proofs again and showing how there's a few changes we need to make when doing these proofs in predicate calculus as opposed to just good old-fashioned propositional logic. Then we will be looking at how one can prove invalidity of predicate calculus statements, how you can prove that an argument is invalid as opposed to proving it valid. We'll be doing this through counterexamples and finite universes. In video number six, we will be looking at relations and overlapping quantifiers. If you're curious and you want to get a head start on this, check out my video on properties of relations. Should give you a little bit of a sense of where we're going with that video. In video number seven, we will be looking at identity. This is going to be a new operation, which will be represented by an equal sign that we're going to be looking at and learning some rules around its use. In video number eight, we will be doing modal logic. That's the logic of necessity and possibility. And adding some more symbols to our vocabulary. In video number nine, we will look at some final logic problems and the answers to those problems. These are going to be really complicated problems. It's probably going to be a pretty long video that delves into why they're correct and how to do them. If you can solve these problems on your own without looking at my answers, you are going to be completely set to go out into the world and do logic and to critique logical arguments. And finally, video number 10 is going to be a surprise. It's going to be a bit of a mystery. We're probably going to have some fun with logic and all of the different things that we've learned. So stay tuned, everyone, and stay skeptical.